and I'll say that again. I'll say I'm glad that we're here today to celebrate together the feast of the of the Ascension. Uh, the service is uh, daily evening prayer, right to which is found in the Book of Common Prayer. That is the 1979 uh, Book of Common Prayer. Um, I'm going to begin with an opening sentence uh, on page 115 in the prayer book, and then I'll lead everyone in the confession. And we'll go from there and I'll lead the service. And thank you for all the readers who are here. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of almighty God, let us sit in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Yeah. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Good, it worked, Michael. Uh, the uh, hymn that is designated for evening prayer is uh, Oh Gracious Light, it's hymn 25 in our hymnal. And I'm going to, uh, it's three short verses. I'm gonna read the first two verses and then just uh, simply sing the third verse. You'll find the words in your uh, prayer book there on page 118. Oh gracious light, Lord Jesus Christ, in you the Father's glory shone, immortal, Holy, blessed is he, and blessed are you, his holy son. Now sunset comes, but light shines forth. The lamps are lit to pierce the night. Praise Father, Son, and Spirit, God, who dwells in the eternal light. Worthy are you of endless praise, O Son of God, life-giving Lord. Wherefore you are through all the earth, and in the highest heaven adored. The psalm uh, appointed for this evening is Psalm 93. And I'll read the psalm and uh, ask you to, after the psalm, we'll all say together the uh, acclamation, Trinitarian acclamation that's printed in the bulletin. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, 
mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Tracy, you have to unmute. You think I know. <laughs> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the, to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, Suddenly, two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to God. Song of Mary, Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the father and to the son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immer immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him 
who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you to God. Song of Simeon, Nunc Dimittis. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to, Thanks God. Be to God. God. So Ascension Day, is a principal feast of the church, which means liturgically, it's right up there with Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, All Saints, and just a few others. For most of us though, it doesn't get much attention. So we're a small group this evening, um, especially as it also always falls on a Thursday, never on a Sunday, uh, 40 days after Easter and 10 days before Pentecost. Although we do have this coming Sunday, which is always called uh, the feast after the Sunday after the Ascension or Ascension Sunday, so we can sort of bring the themes of Ascension into uh, Sunday's worship. But frankly, we are tempted just to breeze right by it. Perhaps also we don't know quite what to do with the Ascension. Christmas brings us a sweet baby in a manger, Jesus born to teach, heal, and save us. Easter brings us a risen Lord. Jesus conquering death and offering eternal life. They are both miracles, but ones we can sort of wrap our heads around and see how they affect our lives. But the ascension seems somewhere in between with its otherworldly pre-scientific image of Jesus ascending into the clouds, leaving his bodily life on earth to return to the heavens. We're sort of happy just to jump from Easter into Pentecost and we know how to celebrate the Holy Spirit, the bright red colors, the flames, the fluttering of a dove, the promise of a spiritual connection with God and others. But the church tells us that we can't really get there to Pentecost, to the Holy Spirit, without first passing through the Ascension. And the church has always taught this. That's why both the Apostles' Creed that we just said and the Nicene Creed refer to the Ascension and why it is a principal feast of the church. So what does this event mean for us? In some way, we don't know exactly how the scripture writers described an experience of Jesus leaving his earthly existence behind and ascending, speak, to reintegrate into the Trinitarian community of God's being. But with this integration, it seems that God, the changeless one, is somehow changed. Jesus' human experience, his life with all its emotions, joys, and sorrows, his suffering and death are brought into the Godhead, as it were. Now, some of the medieval 
depictions of the ascension are almost funny with the disciples huddled below and only Jesus's feet hanging out of the clouds above them. But seriously, Jesus's feet in those paintings always bear the wounds of his crucifixion. They never go away. So we believe that Jesus's experience of human suffering and death will always be part of his divine life so that God becomes, becomes one who can then empathize with us, the great high priest, as the letter to Hebrews says, who knows our sufferings. It seems that all the theologians of the church throughout time say that this day, more than any other, seals our fate. That is the good fate of being inextricably united with God in Christ, not only in the future, after death, but right now. So as with all Christian uh, festivals, feasts, and miracles, we aren't meant to get overly caught up trying to figure out how the ascension happened according to the laws of physics. No, Christians do not believe that Jesus's earthly body is now somewhere up above the clouds or in outer space, circling the earth or floating between the planet somewhere. Instead, Christians believe that a spiritual truth not just a nice idea, but a truth is contained in this biblical event. To sort of help us uh, maybe get past some other images that we have, I have an image that Fran, I'm gonna ask Fran to do a screen share. Um, I know that Lorraine can't see it, but the rest of us can. And uh, this is the image of a, of a wonderful, I don't have the date, uh, icon of the Eastern church, the Orthodox church. So we can find some help maybe in understanding the ascension by looking uh, to the east uh, for the image that might help us. Orthodox icons of the ascension have no feet hanging out of the clouds. Although as in many Western pictures, Jesus is ascended in the upper half of the icon, usually with the Virgin Mary and disciples below. And there are the two angels or men in white that we heard of in the text today. However, in these Eastern icons, in most cases, Jesus is surrounded by a circle or oval called a mandorla, not a mandala, which is the Eastern Asian word, but mandorla. The mandorla, a circle within circles sometimes, evokes in a two-dimensional image, the mystery of multi-dimensions. A dark mandorla emphasizes the mysterious and unknowable. Sometimes Jesus enters the sphere of God in a mandorla of cloud. In some icons, fiery multi-eyed seraphim wings, even on a chariot, support the mandorla, the great entrance of Christ into the heavenly dimension. That mandorla looks a bit, I thought when I saw it, like what we might imagine a black hole to be. So black holes in astronomy, if you remember, are real phenomena which scientists tell us we can be sure exist. Not because we can see them, but because of the effect the black hole with its huge gravitational attraction has on the objects around it. In the mandorlas of the Eastern icons, both fire and cloud as well as darkness symbolize the presence of God. Jesus no longer with us in human form in one two or even three dimensions, but in the spiritual realm of multi-dimensions. We cannot see him with our eyes, but we know he is here with us because of the effect his presence has on us. We are inextricably drawn to him and united with him, but unlike a black hole that absorbs everything that gets past the event horizon, in the spiritual dimension that is pictured, at the same time, uh, energy and light will stream out of it from Christ to us, to the mm. Holy Spirit. And so in many mandolas, it's almost impossible to tell whether the mandorla, the presence, the dimension where Christ dwells is really going up or whether it's coming down. It's really just, just present and it's very close to earth. Um, although it is above. 
So uh, we'll you just keep that image in your mind and, and we can stop the screen share. It's kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it helps yeah. us, I think, think about, think about it. But again, let's get a little more down to earth, so to speak. So what does that, this book, what does that mean? And it means that the ascended, perhaps, that the ascended Christ lives both over us as our Lord, as having authority, the authority that we heard about in that letter from Ephesians above all authorities, but also is with us, right, as our companion. Mm -hmm. Jesus is present with us. Mm -hmm. As Jesus promised his disciples, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mm. It may seem paradoxical. Jesus transitions from life on earth to his ongoing life in God. He leaves his disciples, and yet he is closer to them, more intimately related to them and in union with them hmm. and us than ever. How can this be? So the sort of understanding the truth that's at the heart of the ascension is that Jesus, no longer limited by a human body and a human history at a particular time, is now present always and with everyone. Hmm and with us. Paul pointed to this when he wrote of Jesus, he who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things, no longer limited to one place, one body, one time. He is now filling all things. Um, Ephesians, but a little bit later in the, in, the, in the letter to the Ephesians. Jesus Christ is with us always by the power of his spirit. Jesus is our eternal companion in the here and now. Jesus is never absent from us. This multi-dimensional Jesus isn't so hard to understand, really, if we believe as people of faith in a spiritual reality. In effect, this multi-dimensional life depicted in the icon as the mandorla is the life of the spirit, the link between us and God that cannot be seen by the naked eye, the physical eye, but is very real. As we heard uh, in, the, in the lesson also, that the, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you can see this, so that you can comprehend, right? It's not the physical, we can't see mm -hmm. uh, this, but we often, it's still very real, this, isn't it? That's why we worship, that's why we're in a church, that the spiritual presence and we all experience it most often in prayer, meditation, in worship, in the heights of human love, and in profound experiences in nature, where there seems to be a liminal space that connects heaven and earth. Hmm. Hmm. For this reason, uh, by the way, that I named some of my paintings that you've seen at parts of, of great cloudy skies and, and abstract land. I call hmm. it my heaven and earth uh, series. Hmm. We do not have to die and go to heaven or in this life visit the Holy Land to feel closer to Jesus. We don't have to visit a holy place to be nearer to our Lord. Hmm. Jesus is with us wherever we are and with us always. That doesn't discount the way I know I feel when I'm at atonement, the, what we feel when we are in ancient or sacred places and holy places, there is a sort of special way that we can sometimes connect and feel God's presence, but we don't have to be in a holy place. And the ascension is, is the reason why Christians believe this, that God, Jesus is now present to us spiritually, wherever we are, whatever time. John Calvin noted how beneficial this is to us. He wrote, Quote, Christ left us in such a way that his presence might be more useful to us, a presence that had been confined in a humble abode of flesh, so long as he sojourned on earth, end quote. It's more useful to us, since now the ascended Christ is with us by his spiritual presence. Christ's power and energy are diffused and spread beyond all the bounds of heaven and earth. Hmm. Now, once again, that these are all images, whether it's an icon or a painting or even uh, a true scriptural story, but they're always expressing something that is beyond what we can fully see with the human or feel with the human senses. 
So the ascension, one of the reasons why it feels so sort of unusual and not so as concrete as some of the other feasts is that it really emphasizes that aspect of faith, which we actually is essential to our faith, that sense of the spiritual reality of which we're a part. It's not just about certain events or certain stories or uh, certain rites or sacraments as important as they are. It's this reality of the spirit that connects us to Christ um, and makes us aware of the sort of eternal nature, um, the spiritual nature of life, of all of life. So now Jesus Christ is with us. By faith, we experience the reality of his presence. Paul wrote elsewhere, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Christ's ascension means Jesus is over us, but also for us and with us. Let us set our minds on him. Looking towards Pentecost, let us patiently wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit and open our hearts so that through the Spirit, Jesus can live his life through us and in us, and so that his love can flow from us to a world sorely in need. Mm. Amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Mm. Excellent. Yes. So now we do affirm uh, our faith uh, by saying the Apostles' Creed. It's found on page 120 of the prayer book, if you have that with you, and I'll say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, with you. and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be hallowed thy, name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy come, kingdom come. Thy will, thy be, will done be done on earth, on earth as it is in, heaven. is in heaven. Give us Give this, us day, this day, day our daily our bread. Daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Suffrages B, page 122. And, uh, does someone else have a prayer book? Dean says Dean's not here. Could someone response, respond for me? Margaret, would you unmute and make, do, make the responses, which is basically the same, as you can see, the same words. Mm -hmm. We entreat you, O oh Lord. For those of you who uh, don't have the prayer book but are muted, you can also respond. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O oh Lord. All right that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, we entreat you. O Lord. O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord. O Lord. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, o Lord. o Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, o Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. 
We entreat you, oh you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Let's offer the collect of the day. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Amen. Savior, Jesus Amen. Christ, Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Jesus. Through Jesus Christ, our, Christ Lord, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. one God, Okay. In glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A, a collect no, I, I, no, not, okay. not quite yet. I think I have I have two collects and then we'll have the two collects commission. Um, so this is the collect for peace. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all, all right. right judgments, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Collect for the presence for uh, protection. O oh God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To call its permission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your lovers' love's sake. Amen. 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 O oh God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us a spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The closing hymn is hymn 24. The day that thou gavest, Lord, is ended. And... Uh, I'm going to attempt to sing the first verse and then I'll read uh, the second and third verses and possibly sing the fourth verse. So that it is hymn 24, uh, the day, and it's a classic hymn that's almost always sung at even song uh, around the world as part of the, our tradition. The day thou gavest, Lord, is ended. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascended. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest. We thank thee that thy church unsleeping, while earth rolls onward into light, through all the world her watch is keeping and rests not now by day or night. As o'er each continent and island, the dawn leads on another day. The voice of prayer is never silent, nor dies the strain of praise away. So be it, Lord, thy throne shall never like earth's Proud empires pass away. Thy kingdom stands and grows forever till all thy creatures own thy sway.
And at this time, we have uh, just a few moments of quiet in which to offer any intercessions or thanksgivings that you may have on your heart or, or minds. And I want to lift up especially the Clark family and Walton Clark's mother, Margaret, who is either near death or has passed. I'm, I don't know, but I know that she was very close to death. And so Lord, I, I offer Margaret to, I can commend her to you. And I pray for Walton and his brothers and all those in the family who are grieving, that you would bless them with your peace and with the knowledge of eternal life. I also pray for Lauren Matisse, who is actually Lauren Hancock Matisse, John Hancock's sister, who was diagnosed with COVID-19 in Switzerland and is being treated. And we just pray that her symptoms may be mild and that the treatment would be effective and she would recover quickly. And I pray for Dean who was having a difficult day today and just uh, sleep disorder was really making it very difficult for him to wake up um, all through the day and uh, he's not, not feeling well. So I, I pray Lord that you would heal him and strengthen him um, and help his uh, doctors to diagnose all, all that he needs to be treated. I'd like to pray for my friend Harvey, who um, has emphysema and went to Temple for a special procedure, but they said his lung um, could not take the procedure, but mm. they're going to try something else to see if they can help him with mm. the, his illness. That's a shame. I also like to lift up our country. I, I feel um, we really need God's hand to help us come together as a nation. Yes. Ooh. Oh, very much so. And I also just bring to mind and heart people in countries where COVID-19 is not on retreat as it is here with us, um, particularly in India, uh, where they're seeing so much suffering um, and in Brazil and other places where there is not sufficient uh, resources, not sufficient uh, vaccine, not sufficient uh, ways in which to distribute uh, the vaccine and uh, just have our minds and hearts open to any way that we can help through relief or as well as, well as prayer. And I, I lift them up to you, Lord, and ask that you would show our nation and the nations of the world ways in which we can better distribute, equitably distribute the vaccine and the resources to so many countries that need it. So Lord, we lift up all these concerns to you and all those on our healing prayer list and the concerns that are known to you alone. Um, in the name of your son, uh, Jesus Christ. And we close our prayers by saying the general thanksgiving uh, found in the prayer book on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Mm -hmm. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. 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 Well, blessed Ascension Day. And now we, we enter into Ascension Tide, which is the 10-day period of waiting. Jesus has ascended. Uh, we are perhaps just a bit forlorn, a bit, a bit uh, empty waiting, waiting for the spirit to come. Uh, and uh, after 10 days, we'll hit the 50th day of Easter, uh, which is Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So uh, blessed ascension and blessed ascension tide in the days to come.